Hi friends! If you are here to check out my last edited video of the Gia as well as my best of 2020 skincare, makeup, and brushes then please keep on watching. Hi, I'm Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, so you can head over to my Instagram. I might do one more live before 2020 is up. And I was toying with the idea of doing a few more other videos before the end of the year. I'm like, Alicia, just wrap it up just wrap it up. It has been quite the year. I want to say it has been transformative in positive ways and in not so positive ways. The you know what has impacted the globe in a way that I didn't even anticipate witnessing, being a part of. It forced me to change. It forced me to turn the mirror onto myself and really smash it into this complexion, okay? Challenging myself as an artist, challenging myself as a content creator, as a teacher. It was just so unexpected. This wasn't local. This was, again, global. Everyone was going through it in some form or fashion, no matter what industry you found yourself in. You were affected, whether it was financially, mentally, artistically and therefore the last few months have been a blur and when I thought about what products what tools and what have you were my favorites of the year I was just like what what happened in 2020 so much full spectrum political social justice you know I, I can go on and on and retrospectively I didn't realize how the chaos of uh, the dialogue that was going on social media, uh, the dialogue that was going on around me in close and far out, it affected how my body felt, how my mind felt. I was just so deep in thought and having conversations with myself that I didn't realize it had an impact on how I created, how I, I taught and all these things. So really, I'm happy this year is wrapping up. I learned something profound, which... I could apply to every year, but especially this year, is to just do it. If I'm wondering if something's gonna work, just do it. If I don't know if my Zoom classes are gonna work, just do it. If I'm afraid to send out my newsletter, if I'm afraid to uh, market my classes on social media, just do it. And you never know until you try. And even if you fail, fail, I think of that as a stepping stone as experience to put into your portfolio for future use for future try and try again. And I'm really happy that I'm more confident in making those choices. I'm more confident in just doing the thing, okay? Whether it has to do with my teaching, whether it has to do with this, uh, creating YouTube content. I wanted this to be the last video because although I haven't been posting every day and I haven't been doing a huge amount of work, I felt like maybe I should give myself a break, wind down and make a plan for 2021, how I want to create content, if I want to uh, stay on YouTube or go to Patreon and just weigh out my options because a uh, tangent, I'm so sorry. Oh, this video is gonna be a little long by the way, just so you know. The fact that YouTube is now putting ads on our videos and we don't know where those ads go we don't know how many they are is upsetting is ruining uh the viewer experience we created such a great relationship and now i don't have control over where those ads go and it bothers me so that's why i'm thinking maybe i should just go light on the youtube content and maybe go a little heavier on other platforms you guys will let me know down below i also was again like i said before toying with maybe producing more videos before the year is up and I thought just do the big mama best of 2020 video. Previous years I've done different categories. I was like no 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 this year just pick one product per category. You could mention the honorables right you could say these are the other products you were thinking about but Alicia narrow it down. That's what we're gonna do today, fam. Of course, I have my collaboration with Aliens of Brooklyn, which was one of the highlights of the year. It has been a beyond stressful year, but there have been some happy moments for the duration of the last, I wanna say a couple, several months. I have the 
High Friends beanie on in mustard as well as the flannel. I believe there might be some sizes still available in the flannel but not in the 1XL and 2XL I'm afraid. I'll have those links down below. The mustard I think is still available and of course Eastly earrings one of my most favorite brands of earrings in addition to Peachy Sundays an Australian brand owned and created by Simone. Glitter Limes owned and created by Debbie and Eastly by Carrie. I haven't worn glitter limes in a long time but Debbie creates fruit earrings where this is real fruit that she puts resin and glitter on so they're really cute and I have worn these a long time but I got into the Eastly and I got into the Peachy Sundays I have to rotate my earrings better but had to mention these and shout out to Debbie for sending me a pair of earrings last month you the best so I thought why don't we start with some skin care I have to say there have been a lot of cleansers that I've been loving for the last several months, but there's one cleanser that really just jump-started my search for the one that's not going to strip my skin, just take off my makeup, excess oil and dirt, and be good. And that has to be the Crave Beauty Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. I'm almost finished with this and I could have sworn I had another tube to use up, but I, I haven't found it, so maybe I used it up. Incredibly soothing, not irritating. There's no fragrance. It gets the job done. I have been skipping the uh, double cleanse. I've only been relying on one cleanser and although I had used this in conjunction with like a balm or a cleansing oil, I found this was really great to follow and also when I adapted the whole just one cleanse routine, I used this until the bitter end and it's phenomenal in taking again makeup and excess oil off, excess dirt. It leaves the skin clean without feeling stripped or dried and following with perhaps is my favorite essence of the year and has been for prior years. No other than the Neogen uh, Real Firm and Micro Essence. I featured this in my empties 2020. I had like two <laughs> empty bottles of this stuff. Amazing essence. I do think it makes a difference in hydration levels in the skin. It preps it well for treatments that could be overly drying, but it doesn't disturb the efficacy of those treatments. Nice to wear this under a serum or an ampule. I think I showed this product once. I'm nearly done with it, but I have to give it up to the Inch Tree Spot Saver Mugwort Ampule. I'm almost done with it. It's hard to see in the gradient bottle. You know, I'm presenting this as a favorite because it did not wreak havoc on my skin. I know we want products to be super transformative, to give us new texture, new this, new that. Sometimes I think a product is worth praise when it just leaves your skin be and it doesn't irritate it and it doesn't cause trouble okay mugwort is said to help with discoloration uh to lessen irritation to soothe the skin and that's what i was all about in 2020 soothing not irritating making sure my skin was happy that whatever actives that i apply the actives will not wreak even more havoc because my skin was good to go i really love this product specifically because it's lightweight it has a serum like feel but when it dries down it's not sticky and it leaves that perfect layer before moisturizer or another more creamy serum when I apply it and more importantly to me there's no fragrance there's not even a little bit of like an herbal naturally occurring fragrance I mean this stuff is fragrance free and I highly recommend it for anyone with sensitive skin that wants an ingredient that helps soothe it but it's not going to further irritate it treatments what can I say I am on my second bottle of the glytote antioxidant vitamin C and E serum. This relies on a vitamin C derivative, THD, tetrahexyl decyl, ascorbic, something. No, ascorb. I'm going to put it up right next to me. I especially love this vitamin C serum because it doesn't use traditional L-ascorbic acid. That could be amazing, but the minute you open the bottle, the minute you expose it to light and air, the efficacy it starts to break down and it smells. It smells fam. This does not smell like anything. Even after it completely dries down, I do not detect it fragrance wise on my skin. I really love the texture. Some people feel that it's a little sticky once you apply it, but I found when you let it settle in for like a minute or two, it leaves behind a really nice plush texture on the skin, which I think is ideal for makeup application. And it just feels good. My skin is plump. 
is elastic. The THD in this formula helps to even out my skin tone, my PIH, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from the picking that I've been doing in 2020. Definitely not a favor for this year. And I do feel it helped even out my skin and gave it a little bit of brightness and glow in conjunction with, of course, the Neogen essence and the inch tree mugwort ampule so i felt the products in my routine work synergistically and well that again it didn't cause irritation it didn't get crazy on my skin and uh we're doing pretty good star serum for the day in 2020 and of course i have to give it up I know this is prescription fam, but I still gotta present it as a favorite for the year. The Tretinoin Cream in 0.025. Tretinoin, which is known to be a retinoic acid, I just think is a staple. It's not for everyone, however. This stuff can be irritating, but I introduced it slowly into my skin routine by applying this over moisturizer first. Once my skin became acclimated, I then applied this after I cleansed, ideally after I applied my Real Firmin Essence, because again, that doesn't have any fragrance, it doesn't have have any serious active so I just wanted my skin to be a little more hydrated before I apply the tretinoin cream and of course I follow with my favorite uh, night cream whatever whatever I was using at the time and I truly think the tretinoin cream helped heal my skin faster it helped fade my marks faster and again if you slowly introduce this ingredient into your skin routine if you apply it over moisturizer the minute you start applying this straight out of the gate after your cleanser every night you're going to run into problems you'll run into peeling irritation itchiness dryness redness and your skin barrier is going to be like what are you doing so i highly recommend if you wanted to try tretinoin of course make sure it is prescribed by your dermatologist that you're okay to use it that you're not pregnant or whatever circumstances that will make it a no-no <laughs> If you take your time introducing it into your routine, it could lessen the risk of the dryness and the peeling. And of course, I have to give it up to my favorite moisturizer, the Good Molecule Silicone Free Probing Moisturizer. Disclaimer, I did work with Good Molecules. I believe it was November. It was a sponsored video for their uh, Black Friday Festival campaign, which was really fun to work with them on. Thank you again to Good Molecules for that video. I have bought this prior to that campaign, and I believe I bought another bottle I think during one of Beautylicious something something. I love this not because it's silicone free because I do use products with silicone in them. I'm more so impressed by the formula how it leaves my skin feeling hydrated and moisturized but not overly greasy and not overly shiny. It leaves my skin in the most perfect texture for makeup application. Furthermore an ideal texture to apply under sunscreen. It's lightweight but very creamy and lush and again leaves my skin feeling beautifully soft and nourished without the heaviness and of course i have to give it up to my favorite sunscreen of the year i might have done this for 2019 i actually don't remember it still remains my favorite sunscreen and it has to be the crave beat shield i know there's some I don't want to say drama going around, but there's concern over Korean and Japanese sunscreens not actually being the degree of protection that they're marketing on their products. Leah, the owner and founder of Crave Beauty, I feel is adamant about making sure her sunscreens are properly tested for consumer use and that we're actually getting the SPF 50 that this cannot say because it's sold here in the US, but the other packaging that's sold in Asia, we're actually getting SPF 50 with a PA++++ plus rating. I love the texture. I love the fact that it's not overly drying. It's not overly slick. And let me just say, not only for the skincare category, but this goes to makeup and tools. Naming one favorite does not discredit the other favorites that I have in my collection. The Nivea water gel, uh, cream gel. The There's a Shiseido Senska SPF I really love. The Eevee Technology. All those are my favorites, but I really have a special place in my heart for the Beat Shield because I think this is my first positive experience with a Korean sunscreen and it just kind of snowballed my interest in finding out the differences between sunscreens made not only in Asia, but in Europe, Australia, and here, the differences between the filters and how they see filters, how we see filters here, totally different. Formulations, totally different. The ingredients are different. So this really inspired 
just my interest and my intrigue when it comes to sunscreen. And I think this is an impeccable formula. It doesn't smell like sunscreen. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin. It just leaves the skin plush and moisturized behind. I would recommend, however, if you are on the drier side of the spectrum, that you make sure you apply a moisturizer that's more suitable for drier skin, maybe a little more emollient that has the shea butter. If you're okay with silicones, dimethicone, or if you're not okay, petrolatum. I love I just slap on some CeraVe on my face sometimes at night, fam. I mean, that's that's just what you got to do sometimes. But those are my standout best of skincare 2020 picks. Those are the ride or die products that no matter what I add in between, take out, try, I always come back to these. I always know they're going to treat my skin well. They're just going to allow it to thrive, to heal, and just allow my skin to be the best that it can be. Ooh, before we get into the makeup, we should take a little stretch break. Ooh, the side bend is a good way to go. Before we roll into best of 2020 complexion and brushes, why do you come in a little closer? <gasps> That's enough. The foundation pick was not hard at all, but the foundation brush was hard. A few of my favorites this year, the Koyuro PP12, I think this is the 12. It's all goat hair, but I just love the shape of the brush. The Koyuro Makiko cheek brush, all synthetic fiber. The Chikuholdo Takumi T11 foundation brush, all goat hair. And of course the Esom T47, which is found in my collaboration with Muse Beauty Pro and Esom. I know that's a really biased choice, but it was one of the best parts of this year. And yes, it's in my collection. Yes, I'm gonna post a link down below. But this is a good foundation brush. I'm not gonna pick one. I love all these for different reasons. That's why I presented all of them. I know I said at the beginning of the video that I was only gonna do one. With the makeup, I'll only do one. But the brushes is really hard, fam, because I feel they all serve a different purpose. Some people use natural hair. Some people use synthetic. Yes, I could have done best synthetic, best natural, but come on. Really? You want me to pick one foundation brush? Don't make me do it. There is one best of 2020 foundation you already know what it is you already know what it is changed my life i present to you the suku cream foundation another note about this foundation is the durability of the material that made this jar i can't even tell you how many times i dropped this jar on the floor fam okay a lot i have a wood floor this did not crack i mean i am floored but anyway back to the real reason why i'm announcing this as best 2020 foundation is it the easiest to deal with no it's in a jar it's not in a pump bottle it's not in a tube it doesn't have a doe foot applicator japanese makeup is remarkable in terms of its formulation the color science involved now my one critique is that because it is japanese Yes, their shade range is not as extensive, but I would say now because they are becoming more mainstream, a brand like Suku really has to step it up in terms of widening their skincare range. And I understand they want to do it right. They don't just want to come out with like a thousand shades and they all look orange and warm and whatever. So I get it. And I'm happy to say they are working with makeup artists in the UK to make that happen. No fragrance creamy but dries down to a satin finish so this is a reformulated version of their extra rich cream glow foundation that's not new in 2020 but i've tried for the first time this year and the cream foundation is like an upgraded version of the extra rich glow and let me tell you fam this is just one of the best foundations i have ever used again it your skin looks like skin it doesn't look heavy, it's good on photographs, it's good on video, it wears well throughout the day, it doesn't change color. In fact, it just looks better as it wears because the Suku foundation technology makes it so you have different, like in fragrance, you have different notes, you have different complexion shade notes in the Suku foundation. So the more you wear it, the more it just melts into your skin. I have 040 and 035. 035 is like my shade shade. When you see it initially, you might think that might be too light. Or not, you're like, no, that's about right, at least. Yeah. This is the 040, so it's a little warmer. I thought 040 was gonna be my match, but they, they both are phenomenal. As I apply this foundation, you will soon understand why it is such 
a diehard favorite. I'll take a little bit of the 035 on the center of my face, the 040 on the perimeters of my face. The leftover, I'll just mix it up with one of my Faye foundation brushes. Coverage, I would say it's medium. But the thing is, the Japanese aesthetic is not into coverage. They're into ensuring that your skin remains looking like itself even after foundation application, that it doesn't look heavy, it does not appear artificial, that it doesn't appear like it's just sitting on the skin and it won't accentuate texture, it won't accentuate pores, it just melts together and leaves behind just a beautiful soft focused look to the skin that again, I'm not into completely covering my blemishes because you know what, it, they're there. And if they wanna peek through the bit of coverage that I apply on top, then so be it. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is. But it blurs the imperfections without looking heavy on the skin. And it's just beautifully easy to apply. Now, I was never one to gravitate toward a cream foundation, especially it had the word cream in the formula title. This though, the cream is the most lightweight, whipped feeling cream foundation. It's gonna give you that medium coverage that's layerable. If you want a little more, you can go in with a little more, but it's not gonna leave behind texture on the skin. It's not gonna look heavy as I mentioned, and it's just a dream to apply. If you're more on the oily skin type spectrum, it'll leave behind more of a satin feel. If you're more normal to dry, it's gonna leave behind maybe I would say soft matte, and soft matte to the Japanese is like not dry at all, like not even close. Again, this is just so elegantly formulated that I feel covers a wide spectrum of skin conditions and types without accentuating any of the skin issues that you might be undergoing. Look at that. Look, look, look. Look at me. Concealer. Ooh, 2020 was the year of concealer. What can I say? There have been so many concealers that were released in 2020. We had the Hourglass. I know you're all not happy. I'm not happy with them either, but the Hourglass concealer was one of my faves, okay? I'll come out and say it. The Shiseido Gel Stick, the Dior Skin Forever Correct, the Suku Intense Cover Concealer. This one was really hard because again, I'm forcing myself to just pick one. It was between Mama Pat and the Dior. But because I could only choose one, I know you guys are not gonna believe it. I'm going in with the Dior. I am. Look, it's so messy. Pat's concealer has that coverage without looking dry under the eyes on any portions of your face. But maybe that's not for some. The reason why I'm going with the Dior as best concealer of the Gia is because of it's just fluid, beautifully soft texture, the fact that you can not only use this under the eyes, but all over your face, on certain portions of your face. The bigger doe foot applicator design makes it seamless for that. If you just want to go bloop, 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 you're done and you have some coverage without it looking heavy on the skin. If you don't want to commit to an actual foundation, you have this as a foundation alternative, as, as, so, as a tinted moisturizer with a little more coverage. And that's why I had to go with the Dior I did. Now, the reason why I was going back and forth Fourth is because the Dior has a six month expiration shelf life and the Pat McGrath does not. Pat McGrath, 12 months, lasts a little longer. I use this way beyond the six month recommendation and nothing happened, okay, we're, we're still okay. I have four shades. I have the 3M, which I use for a lower 2W under the inner, sorry, I didn't wanna flip you off. 2W for the under eyes. 4N if I want a little more warmth and 5N for a little bit of like, shaping going in with three and a little bit of the two dubs right on the inner part of the eye presenting my top picks for concealer brushes this year had to go with the pat mcgrath concealer brushes that released with the concealer i know these are like so overpriced but i really love the design and how soft they feel the chikohoro takumi t6 little natural hair goat brush the zoeva 146 concealer brush and of course the bk beauty 108 i understand this was meant to be a powder brush, but I use this for a concealer. I like that it's synthetic, that it works well with creams and liquids, that it's not going to take away that coverage, 
but I really just love it for blending out my under eye concealer. It's soft enough under the eye that it doesn't feel prickly, but it gets the job done. It blends quickly. I don't spend a lot of time under my eyes. Now, if I want a little more coverage, yes, I'll go in with the pad. I will just go in there with the LM13 and with her little concealer brush, I'll pat it down right here. So I'm not taking it on the entire under eye area. It's just on the portions that need a little more coverage. Because again, although I am presenting just one fave for each category in the makeup realm of things, ideally I use all these products together. I don't use just one foundation, one concealer in one makeup routine. I mix them up, especially if you have so many products. I mean, that's, that's what you gotta do. Best Loose Powder 2020 is easy. That was easy. Gotta give it up to the Suku Sheer Loose Powder. This stuff is like silk, but it's gonna hold your makeup down, not look heavy. If you stay away from powder, especially if you're on the drier part of the skin type spectrum, powder makes your under eyes look like reptile skin. This ain't gonna do that. I recommend that you are light-handed with the application, however. A little tap, tap, and you're done. Don't go in with that baking stuff, okay? Same thing all over the face. You just lightly dust it all over your face. And with that said, why don't I present my fave powder brushes of the year? If I have to go with the best squirrel, oh my god, one of my top picks for squirrel. Of course, the Chikuhodo Kazan powder brush. And of course, I have to take a moment to shout out Fude Beauty, one of the many great relationships I made over the course of 2020. Their generosity has always humbled me and without their help, I would not have been able to produce these Fude brush videos as they were so kind to send me many of them to review, to speak about because they are so expensive. They thought it would be helpful to all of you to speak more about them and the fact that I did not have to finance it greatly helped. So shout out to Fude Beauty. Thank you so much for everything in 2020. Along side the Syrah powder brush I have to say one of my faves it didn't come out in 2020 but I bought it in 2020 Chikuhodo Fox series powder brush as well as no other the refer 25 and the Chikuhodo Takumi what is this the the P the T one both of these are really similar I feel they have a similar feel they're very soft but this is all goat hair the Surat and the Chikuhodo squirrel hair this is Kazan this is gray squirrel, and then this is fox. I don't have a favorite synthetic powder brush because I rather use a natural hair brush for powder application. I feel it just yields a smoother finish, just more soft focus effect. But I will mention the Nakumura Seisakusho K series powder brush that I recently spoke about. This is synthetic and a goat hair blend, so it's not exclusively synthetic. They do have all synthetic brushes in their line, and I would like to try one of their bigger powder brush offerings just to get a feel. But for today, will use the Kazan. I gotta say, this is just one of the softest brushes I have ever encountered. And I know not everyone's into softness. Maybe you want a goat hair brush that is a little more efficient at picking up, a little more efficient in blending. So it really all depends. That's why I presented the Takumi and the Refer powder brushes because those are psycho goat hair. If you want a bristle that's gonna move the powder a little more, then definitely go with those. But if you just want like a feather light wash of Pauja than the Kazan. Not even this powder brush from the Kazan series. Any of the cheek designs that are slightly smaller but are still gonna apply your loose powder beautifully. Like it picks up just the right amount. It's not gonna overload the skin. It's just every time. It's just like the first time. <laughs> Here's a refer brush. Again, this is GOAT, so this will pick up a lot more product. It's gonna lay it down a lot more, and perhaps this fiber, or rather this Psycho GOAT hair is more appropriate for oily, more oily skin as the Kazan squirrel hair might be a little too soft for oily skin. That's what I read in terms of recommending what hair type for what skin type. And the under eye brushes, now you could very much use a cheek brush to apply your under eye powder, but I have to present the Wayne Goss Artist Brush that comes in his Artist Brush Collection. The Kamara Seisakusho K Eyeshadow Number 6 Brush. The Surat, I believe this is the, the Grand Smoky Eyeshadow Brush. 
that I love for the under eyes. And lastly, my Hakuhoro brush. This is the 5521B. Out of all of these, ugh, it's so hard, but it's definitely between the Nakamura and the Surat. I just love these shapes for under eyes. The Nakamura is a synthetic and pine squirrel blend, where the Surat is just, I believe, a blue squirrel blend. I love the Surat for under eye. It's just so tapered and soft. It doesn't pick up a whole lot of product. And again, how the brush is designed, this tip just glides softly against the lower lash line without irritating it, without it feeling prickly. And it just moves beautifully under the greater under eye area. And again, if you have extra porridge going on, if you just wanna swirl and twirl, you can swirl and twirl this way. You can pat down, you can press and roll. This, this little brush right here, oh my gosh. Highlight, forget it. Now I know I mentioned I use 5N from the Dior Forever Skin Correct to give me a little sculpt to sculpt, but I wanna take this time to present my favorite bronzer of the year. Don't be mad, friends. Do not be mad. I am still impressed by this bronzer formula from Charlotte Tilbury. It is the airbrush bronzer. Came in this huge compact that I feel is a lot of bronzer, okay, for one person. Is meant to be used on face and body, so I understand you might a little more product if you're gonna brush them on the shoulders and collarbones, okay? This formula took me by surprise. It is so seamless, okay? It melts into the skin. You can layer it and it becomes richer in color without it looking ashy or dry on the skin. And I do think we could have used one more shade. There are four shades in all. The deep shade took a lot of people by surprise. They looked at the deep shade online and when people actually used it, they were like, oh, excuse me. It showed up on a lot of skin tones, but those that are deeper than the deep shade offered in the airbrush bronzer line, I think could use another shade. And I hope Charlotte comes out with that soon. And there are a lot of bronzers that popped off in 2020, okay? But this one right here, forget it. To pick a favorite brush, I have a lot of favorite cheek brushes, fam. I mean, to pick one is mean, okay? Kazan, the GSN line, even the cheek brush from Surat, the Fox brush. You know, I have to go in with my GSN 03. I just love this brush. I love how it's shaped. I get product right here on the edge and I just strike it here on the hollows of the cheekbone and it just applies it effortlessly. But in terms of the bronzer, again, it really just looks like your skin's been airbrushed. Undoubtedly. I can't get over it. And like I said before, you can layer it successfully without it looking powdery on the skin because that's something you could run into when you're trying to build up color that the powder starts to layer in, a, in an unfavoring way. And then you gotta stop, you gotta blend it out, and you're like, oh God. It's just so smooth. Look. Look at my skin. Flawlessly beautiful. Looking sun-kissed in, in a positive way, okay? Like, it's not doing too much. It's just doing the right amount. This isn't too medium, which I think is an ideal shade for me. I could also go in with 310 if I wanted a little bit more. And for that, I'll go in with my Chikohoto Fox Brush in F03, pick up a tiny bit amount on the side of the brush, and just strike it gently here on closer to the temple area of my face. So you get a little more warmth. Oh, this fox brush too. It's so hard. The fox brush is softer than the GSN. Oh, it just feels so plush, like I'm getting hugged by a brush. Okay, blush. Blush was really hard for me to decide because there have been quite a few favorites this year. Best cream blush of 2020. This might be a controversial choice. I gotta give it to the Tower 28. I've got to. I know Fenty came out with like a thousand shades. I like the cream blush formula. I do. I prefer the Tower 28 one. I think it's a little tighter and a touch bit drier, which I think makes it easier to apply. And yes, they only came out with three shades, but I think they're all remarkable across uh, a wide spectrum of skin tones. The Fenty one, you have so many, you have so many shades in the Fenty line that could work that I, I did get all of them, but I haven't been using all of them. This, I feel, is just 
beautiful. This is magic hour. They also have golden hour and happy hour. Golden hour is like that more orangey tone cream blush that is just beautiful. I've been using magic hour for like my everyday type of a, you know, what do I put on when I teach my Zoom class? This is what I rely on and it's just... It's absolutely gorgeous. And I could go back to my foundation brush category to apply any of these products. Let me go in with the Koyudo Makiko brush. Just tap it in here. If you want more of a hygienic uh, application, then you scoop it out first. And just tap it on here on the apples of the cheeks. And take note, I did apply powder first, but the cream does not look a uh, textured on the skin. I think it plays well with other products. You don't have to fear if you forgot to apply this first before you powder. You could apply this successfully on powder and it's not going to disrupt your makeup. It's not going to move your foundation. I applied it successfully as you see over the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush bronzer and it all just melts together and I just enjoy this tone it's just perfect and if you want you can layer it you can apply a powder blush that kind of matches this tone to intensify the color but there is one blush that didn't come out in 2020 but i used for the first time in 2020 that is just so remarkable and elegant in formulation i mean exquisite this was hard because i love both these brands let me just say this. I'm going to give the best blush single to Surat, best blush palette to Suku 102. These shades, I feel Suku has really unique tones in their blush formula. And the reason why I gave Surat the best single blush of 2020 is because the texture of these blushes, they are like silk. They melt into the skin. They don't look artificial. They don't look dry. You can apply this on top of cream, on top of another powder, and it just melts. I mean, look at this. Amazing. But even though these are super bright, they're just so smooth in the blend, in the application. Heck, I'm going to apply this one. Just you wait. Since I'm applying a vibrant shade i'll use my kazan brush it's softer it's not going to pick up as much product like a goat hair brush will i'm going to lightly just just slightly tap oh my goodness and just place it a little higher on the cheeks Woo! again the way it melts is i can't get over it and for the suku i'll apply this shade here i do feel the Surat formula is more silky for sure this is a little more matte and finish the color is still beautiful, but I had to give it to both because again, I think palettes and blush singles are different, okay? Best liquid highlighter of 2020, no other than the Chantecaille Liquid Lumiere. This is in Brilliance and it's just full proof to use. What can I say? I was having a hard time because this and also the Pat, I really enjoy the duo stick from Pat because she has a bomb side as well as an actual highlight side and man oh man the reason why I went with the Shantikai is because I'm just floored with how easy it is to tap on and how beautifully it just melts into the skin and there are no lines of demarcation I'm applying this on top of the bronzer as well as a little bit of the blush it doesn't mix weird with those products. It just melts beautifully. It's so emollient without looking overly slick or overly shiny. And I just love the shade too. It just kind of invokes that glow from within look. And even though I have highlighter on, it looks like I'm doing all the shine. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Best highlighter of 2020, the Natasha Denona. I Need a Nude Glow is by far... One of my most favorite highlighters I've encountered over the course of the year. It was highlighter mania for a minute with the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter highlighter with the Pat McGrath Celestial Divinity highlighter. I do think this was the best one in terms of formula, in terms of shade, performance, and look. This on top of the Chantica, you're not even ready. I'll take my Surat brush that I use to apply my loose powder under the eyes and just the way it adds more shine without looking textured or heavy on the skin. 
it blows my mind. It melts with everything. It doesn't look like it's sitting on my cheekbone. In fact, it further enhances the shine without looking like overly made up highlighter. You know what I'm talking about. That just streak of highlight that people pounce on their cheekbone, but it doesn't look blended. It looks like it's just sitting there. It's like, were, were you were you not finished with your makeup? But this formula is a lot thinner than typical powders because yes, this is like a jelly type formula, but I think ideal, especially if you're not crazy about powder highlighters, if you have texture here on your skin, this does not enhance texture. It just looks like your skin is wet and is absolutely gleamingly beautiful. I didn't do best of highlighter brushes because I basically tried to condense everything together. But if there was one, it's the Koido Premium Series Fan Brush. This little guy surprised the heck out of me. This doesn't pick up as much as the Surratt, especially with this Natasha highlight. But man, if you just want like a light dusting, that looks smooth on the skin and just blends. This little fan brush is so good. And I also like to use it with pigmented blushes. It just fans it on like in a wispy, whimsical way. It doesn't lay on too much product. I'm gonna take this hot curl shade and just like whip it on very softly so everything just pulls together. This is why I love this little fan brush. It surprised me. It still does. I think it's such a unique tool. Not that fan brushes are unique. We've seen them before, but ones that you really actually like to use. This is a squirrel and goat hair blend, I believe. You have best of both worlds. You have the softness from the squirrel, the pickup power from the goat, and you have beautiful performance. L look at my cheeks. Look at my cheeks. Now we're getting into the eyes. We're getting into the eyes. Best eye products without a doubt. The benefit once again. I do like the Surat Brow Pencil Brush. I do. I like how small it is, how sleek it is, the design. I just keep going back to the benefit because of their wide range of shades, just the texture of the pencil. This never steers me wrong and I definitely like to mix it up for sure. I, I like to use different brands and try different brands but for some reason this just it's my favorite okay. I recently picked up the Precisely My Brow in 2.5 from the the benefit sale. It's a little lighter and I wanted a lighter shade to pull through my brow hair adding a little more dimension so they don't look as flat. And of course, Danessa Myricks developed this for benefit, so it's just even more of a reason to stick to it. Best eye primer of 2020. Again, I know we're not a fan of Hourglass, but they created one heck of an eye primer. This is the Veil Eye Primer. I'm nearly done with it. I have a new tube on standby, but I've just been squeezing the very last bit. It doesn't have coverage like the uh, P. Louise, but I don't know if P. Louise is on uh, the the hit list for this year or in the Anastasia, but I appreciate its grip, its soft texture when applying. It has been phenomenal for extending the life of my shadows and also yielding a really beautiful blend. And one of my most favorite eye primer brushes and also to carve under the brow is the Ciroc Concealer Brush. It just gets right under there, man. Ta-da! And sometimes I use the brush to apply it on the rest of the lid. I'll just, you know, do a nice pat down. Let me just do, okay. Okay, let me first mention my favorite liquid eyeshadow of the year. I have to give it up to Sydney Grace's cream eyeshadows. I prefer these over their multi-chrome cream pigments. Their solid color cream eyeshadows are just immaculate. The next one up is the Natasha Denona Chromium Multi-Chrome Liquid Eyeshadows. These are very expensive for what you get and it's a shelf life of six months, but let me tell you, this was very successfully executed. I am still blown away by its performance, by how easy they are to use. And you know what also, the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize, they're phenomenal too. The Sydney Grace, I feel, is more of the indie part of the spectrum, people who really like to play with bolder shades, but the Charlotte Tilbury, for those who like a little more low-key life in the shadow department, you gotta, you gotta go with the Eyes to Mesmerize. Best palette of 2020, I can go different ways. I could come up for arguments for each of these palettes. I have to go with the palette that was a part of one of the most exciting parts of my life during this year. And that has to be Pat McGrath's 
Divine Rose 2. The reason is that Divine Rose 2 is the first PR I received from Pat McGrath and it was just an accumulation of effort from all of you tagging me, sending her emails, whatever the process was, it worked. Her and her team noticed me, they sent me the eyeshadow palette and I just could not, I could not believe it. It was one of the most exciting emotional times of my life because it really represented what can be done if we have support from our community. And when someone believes in you so hard that you feel that they feel you deserve this, it has been one of the most humbling moments of my life. I'll never forget it. And I just can't help but present this as my favorite eyeshadow palette of 2020. Yes, the color story is beautiful and I could have picked another palette and again, create an argument for it as to why it's the best of the year. There's no other palette that I could present than this one just because of what it represents. And thank you guys for... I'm not, I'm just gonna stop talking cause I'm getting emotional. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna stretch, I'm gonna stretch. I love you guys, I really do. Now best eyeshadow brushes 2020, you asking for too much, okay? <laughs> I mean, how could I pick my favorite? These are my top picks for 2020. I have to give it up for a couple. Let me just start with this one, the Koyudo Premium Series Eyeshadow Brush. I believe this is in number four. This is a squirrel and goat hair blend, but it's a multi-purpose brush that not only lays down lid colors beautifully, but it blends out shades beautifully throughout the crease. Lower lash line application, inner corner even. I know it's a big brush for that task, but you can make it happen, okay? A more traditional blending brush, of course, is the Refer number 16. Now, this did not come out in 2020, but it is just so soft and it blends color beautifully throughout the crease. Other brushes for that task, of course, is Bristle Beauty, EO1 that I used for the first time this year. The refer has a little more pushback to it and it picks up a little more product than like a squirrel hairbrush does. So that's why I always come back to this one. For the sake of demoing, I'm going in with the Koyudo and oh my gosh, this, this palette. Eleganza, I'm doing it. I'm just picking up Eleganza with the Koyuto brush and just how, again, it places it beautifully on the lid, turn it on its side, and the way it just glides the color through the crease effortlessly without over manipulating the skin. There's no skipping and you could just be done. Okay, you can be done. If you wanna see, well, check out Naked Blush along the edges of the shadow. And I have to go in with Natasha's Dragonfly in the Chromium because this shade just matches perfectly well with what's going on in Divine Rose 2. The Esom V Series brush in V27, a synthetic shader brush that has really great pick up and movement and I think ideal for this type of a formula. Going with the Koyudo again with Extreme Bergs. Tapping that on the outer part of the lid and then I'll whisk it around through the crease. I'm telling you, one and done. A little bit of Rose Seduction with that same brush overlapping Extreme Burgundy and the Chromium shade in Dragonfly. One of my most favorite shader brushes is a Syrah. This little thing picks up a lot of product but it's so soft that not only can you pack on that product successfully, but turn the brush on its side and use the tips of the bristles to blend it out. It just is effortless. And I have to give it up for Refer again. They're number 23, which is a new shape and that comes in the holiday set that I can link down below. This brush for smaller eyes and for also applying color on the lash line but it's so smooth that it doesn't manipulate the skin and it makes it a cinch to apply shadow on your lash line. I know some people have problems with this task, but with this brush, because again, it's small, you have lots of control from beginning to end, it just places the color there beautifully. And you see, I'm not going in on one swoop. I'm slowly sketching it out. I start from the outer part of my lash line I just go boop, 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 boop. Now, although the brush is soft, it still picks up ample amount of product, but it's not gonna move the skin when you apply the shadow on your lash line, which I think is crucial. And look how easy that wing was. Superb. Naked blush with my Surat shader brush on the lower lash line. Not only is this brush amazing for lid application, but the lower lash line is just enough haze, but not too much. And again, with my Refer 23, 
with extreme burgundy just on the outer part of the lower lash line connecting to what i got on top rose gold the serrat again oh that is just marvelous i keep forgetting the name of this shade excuse me bronze rose bronze rose rose gold is in bronze seduction excuse me gold lust 001 on the inner part of the lower lash line i could have used that brush or the even smaller version of the serrat brush oh this is just perfect for inner lower lash line application. If you don't want it too blown out, you could use that smaller brush and I'm whipping it up through the lid just so it can all combine. Look at that. Look at that. Sexual terrestrial baby, no other on the lower lash line, yes. This brush is so incredibly soft but so precise at the same time, like I can't handle it. A little bit of extreme burgundy on the outer part of the lower lash line on top of sexual terrestrial just to combine i was saying why this palette is my favorite because of the of the emotional depth that it holds but i do think this is a phenomenal palette in terms of performance all the way through the mattes through the specialized shades here that people weren't really fond of i think in her previous palettes but i do think the formula here is a little more consistent than previous palettes that no matter what shade you encounter and even if this got a little hard pan I feel you can still successfully pick up the shade more so with this than other palettes that I have it's just it's beautiful like I want to take this off and do more eye looks with this palette like the the inspiration that it holds for me is incredible skin show rose opal in a corner and this palette as a face palette forget it I'm just applying a little applying a little here on the brow why not with my Koyuto fan brush right here it has like a pearlescent pink feel and i think on top of everything we've done forget it just picks up it just picks up just enough oh i can't take it naked blush also as a blush phenomenal rose seduction phenomenal as a blush thing eyes are done do you think one final blend with the koyudo of course i gotta get everything together best eyelash color Sarat, no question. The matte black design, I feel, adds to the chicness of it, but I also really like the design of the eyelash curler. It's easy to use, but it really pulls up the lashes, but it doesn't crimp them. It actually curls them, I think, because again, the design and angle of the curler allows for that, but it lessens the risk of you pinching your skin. Best mascara for top lashes. This is not the best mascara for lower lashes, but... I gotta get a new tube actually. I'm like way over I think the three month mark. The Pat McGrath Dark Star Mascara. I like it a lot better than her fetish eyes. Some people like it less than fetish eyes but this mascara the way it pumps up the lashes and just layers on itself in a voluminous just thick way but it doesn't look heavy, it doesn't glop up, it doesn't make the lashes look spidery at all. And of course with my new lash, best eyelash serum of 2020 and years prior, the combination just gives me lash, okay? I usually don't wear falsies on the go, I wear falsies if I'm doing multi-look videos just to pull the look together, but I usually primarily just rely on the mascara. The lashes I've been using a lot recently are Sean K Beauty's Chandelier Lashes. Shout out to her for sending those to me. I love the style Lady Grace. I just think those are really easy to apply and I find they look great with everything. But on days that I'm not applying lashes, Dark Star is definitely my go-to. I mean, can you even? This isn't great for the lower lashes. It does transfer on me. So I have to go in with the Hourglass. The Hourglass is not my favorite mascara for top lashes. And I know this is an expensive step. I have to rely on another mascara entirely for the lower lashes. But this does not transfer on me. This is the Unlocked Mascara. A lot better on my lower lashes than they do on my top. The top lashes I have to be careful because if I apply too much of this formula, my lashes look spidery really quickly. If I wanted to combine, I could, but as long as it's not the primary mascara, then we're good to go. This plays rather nicely with Pat's Dark Star. And Pat was nice enough to send me Dark Star also, but I have to get more because I was using the L'Oreal Lash Paradise because I was using the Too Faced Better Than Sex waterproof. 
<sighs> Dark Star wins. I gotta get more of it. That's it. And the best lipstick. <laughs> Lisa Eldridge, what what can I say? There were a lot of lip products that I tried over the course of the year that I loved, right? But if we're talking about ultimate favorite, favorite, favorite and her newer shade, Velvet Muse, and since we got the pink going on, the eyes from Divine Rose Tigo, you gotta go something pink on the lips. Lisa's Enhanced Lip Pencil in Muse, going with Velvet Muse. I mean, look at that. It's so hard for me to find a pink tone lipstick that doesn't make me look like, what is she doing? Velvet Beauty could be a little tricky on me too, but Velvet Muse? Come on. And the Gloss Embrace, I rather enjoy also. This is in Muse as well. I just put a little bit on the center here. Just that little bit shine and, and plump. That is it, fam. Look at the mess I have behind me. My favorite picks for skincare, makeup, and brushes 2020. It was tough. I felt like I've used, tested, reviewed a lot of products this year, but there are always ones that are just stand out no matter what. The minute you use them, you realize that they will become a fast favorite. And over the course of several months, I really tried to edit my buying and go for the products that I know are gonna be phenomenal. And I also sometimes wait, I'll watch other reviews, right? To see what people feel about them. Not only see video reviews, but I'll read reviews online. If I make a fails video for 2020, I'll probably be alive. I'm not too sure. I have to figure that one out because I don't have a whole lot, but I know people love those fail videos. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this best of 2020. I don't know if I will upload this on Christmas Day, but happy, merry everything. If you celebrate, if you don't, I hope you enjoy the day nonetheless. But since this is my last edited video of the year, I just have to say, fam, how grateful I am for you. You guys have helped me a lot this year when you use my affiliate links. Sometimes you sent me Venmos and PayPals and it really helped upgrade my production quality, getting a new camera, getting a new lap, a new mic, new lights. I can't tell you how generous you have been to me throughout this year. You didn't have to. You support so many other creators and you still decided to watch my videos, to use my affiliate links, to tag me on Instagram, to share my merch on Instagram, my collab with Aliens of Brooklyn. Some of you have bought this collab and I'm just so grateful for your kindness, for your thoughtfulness. I really do not know what I could have done without you during this year and some of you are so kind to send me cards and to send me messages to say that my videos have helped you throughout the year because it has been really tough and still is for many people and if the internet offered some silver lining it was just this to stay connected to still build our community and to hold it together when times feel really tough we still have this to rely on and i can't thank you enough again for your support, for your love, and I can't wait to take on 2021 with all of you. We'll still create, we'll still do the makeup, but I'm gonna give my brain and my heart and my soul a little bit of rest, and I can't wait to see you again next year. We'll still do a live before 2021 hits for sure, but I wanted to wrap up my edited videos with the best of 2020, and fam, until then, that is... All right. Thank you all so much for watching, not only for this video, but for the ones prior. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Maybe consider subscribing. Maybe I'll see you in the new year. And until then, I'll see you in here again. Another review, tutorial, vlog, monthly favorites, or brush extravaganza. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.